The original script for this video was over an hour long, and trust me when I say this is the condensed version. The journey it feels like I've been on with this princess sits somewhere neatly between The Lord of the Rings with Frodo's journey to Mordor and The Hangover. Whatever the scenario actually was, I'm here today with a splitting headache and little recollection of what actually occurred and how I got here over the last few weeks. After this experience, I welcome the negative comments I get on my videos telling me I'm wrong when I'm not, or that I sound cocky and arrogant. Sorry guys, that's just the way I talk. I'm aware of it and I would stop it if I knew how. But I will no longer tolerate the comment, suggestion, or even the hint that I do not put enough effort into testing these printers before forming a conclusion. Because with this one, well, you'll see. And I was considering toning down the drama side of this review, you'll understand why in my conclusion, but as my members properly advised me in a private video to them, you would all want to see the real and unfiltered journey as a taste of what you may get from this new brand. And yeah, I do have a reputation of quite bluntly doing that. So hi, I'm Ross and this is Farhammer Videos. Watch me now as I bite the hand that feeds. I don't ever want to drag you through a lengthy meandering waste of time with my videos, but for once I do feel like my journey is important. The printer does stuff and we'll get into that and I usually like to separate the product from the company behind it because everyone's experience with a brand is different. But when it comes to an unknown company like Apex Maker, am I right in thinking you want to know if this new kid on the block is a brand you can trust, especially when wading into something at this price? Also, this experience just really pissed me off. So let's get into it. This is already a very niche printer. As I film this video, the printer is live on Kickstarter and is nearing 1.5 million pounds in backer contributions. And that is a nice achievement. And it is an incredible piece of engineering. This behemoth is the largest printer I've ever used. It's got a 16 inch 8K screen and is capable of printing up to 353 by 198 by 400 millimeters. That's nearly half a meter tall. It's so big that I can't even fit the full printer in a single shot on my camera. And because it's big, it's also strong and it's heavy. And that's where the first of our problems comes in. But before that, let me take you back. You see, I first learned of this printer after chatting with Jerry from the print house and check out his review of this too. We were both talking about the Anchor Make M5C and we were both reviewing that at the same time and he mentioned he'd been offered the Apex Maker X1. I looked at the specs of this and yeah, immediately I was floored, I was wowed. So I emailed them and just said, please, 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 can I have one? And I emailed them again and again and again, but I got no response for begging. But at the same time, Jerry hadn't had much of a response on his, so we wondered whether or not this might be yet another Kickstarter scam. It was only when he later mentioned that their emails back to him ended up in his spam folder that I checked my spam folder too. I had no reply, but it turns out that I did have something else, an offer to review the printer several weeks before I started emailing them. And replying to this resulted in nothing more. But then a couple of weeks later, the same person contacted me again to offer it again. And I'm not sure how much spam this relatively unknown company gets where they missed my incessant chasing, but for whatever reason, they missed all my earlier emails and sent me a fresh offer. I accepted and the printer turned up a couple of weeks later. And I do need to apologize because this bit, along with some later parts of the video, have no footage. I was already dealing with so much frustration that I simply wasn't in the mood to also film all the issues I was dealing with. So I'll use photos where I can and then some filler footage where I can't. But anyway, the printer came very, very smashed. Now, because this is a prototype and this is a preview, packaging hasn't actually been finalized. And this isn't the first time I've received a 3D printer in a wooden crate. And you probably won't receive yours in a wooden crate if you get one. You might, but probably not. They're still working on packaging. But it was so heavy that when I got it delivered, I actually had to help the UPS driver carry it to my doorstep. One side of the crate supports were unfortunately smashed in all the clips had been ripped off, so at some point, someone's been in this. But before I removed the printer from the box, it was obvious that the base of the printer had been smashed in because the left side of the feet were all but perpendicular to the chassis. So I soldiered on and struggled to cantilever this thing into my house, 
And the hardest part was a solo lift of this 42 kilogram monstrosity onto my workshop. That whole getting it in and up onto my bench took the better part of an hour. Now, you may be there and about to yawn and click away and think, what does this have to do with the printer? Well, bear in mind this is not a small plastic toy, nor is it flat pack furniture. You'll need to have a way of getting a 42 kilogram unit from your doorstep to wherever it's gonna live in your home or workplace. In the words of that Albanian guy from Taken, good luck. Was it Marco? I think his name was Marco. So anyway, despite all this, I could not get the printer to turn on and I emailed Apex Maker to tell them and awaited their response. Obviously, as you see here, I did get the printer working, but I'll come back to that. One thing I do want to talk about is the spec. So yeah, this thing is huge, but it only has an 8K screen. I say only 8K because on a 16 inch screen, those pixels are far larger than they would be on smaller 8K screens. 8K resolution is a fixed number of pixels, no matter how big your screen is. If you think larger 8K screens have more pixels than smaller 8K screens, then you're mixing up resolution with PPI, which I suppose is also a measure of resolution, but that's not what we use on displays. I've explained this in every video, please go watch those or use Google to get a better explanation of what PPI and fixed 8K, 2K, 4K, 12K, all those resolutions are and why they're not the same thing. In this case, the screen has 46 micron pixels. This is on the poorer side of modern printers if you're looking for absolute detail. But are you really looking at this thing to print detailed stuff like miniatures or small objects? Oh, you are? Oh, oh, okay. Well, in that case, the prints aren't bad. Even with the resin they shipped me, which is very harsh and sharp and brittle, it's your typical fast resin. A whole tray of printed miniatures still looks pretty decent once you add some anti-aliasing, and I'm sure many watchers would agree, this is of more than passable quality. If you're looking for a printer that can chuck out an absolute ton of passable quality models in rapid succession, this is the unit for you. I guess that's the end of the review. Thanks for watching. Oh yeah, no, sorry, there's, there's more to tell you. But first, really quick, if you are going to buy this and like our content, please click our affiliate links before making a purchase. We get a commission at no cost to you, and it's how we fund making these videos. You see how I haven't said this video is sponsored by anyone? That's because I haven't been paid by anyone to say a particular thing. Yes, I accept the printer to do the review because, well, I need it. I only get paid if you use my links below the video and order something from those stores. But after the reviews are done, these things are mostly just sitting dormant around my house. This one is currently being used as a table. Right, do you remember when I said I'd emailed Apex Maker and I'm only just now coming back to it? Yeah, I kind of wanted to give you a taste and it really is just a little taste of what my experience was like when communicating with them. It took ages. You see, I'm in the UK and from here, whenever you email Eastern companies, no matter what time of the day you email them, you generally aren't getting a reply until you wake up the next morning. Sometimes if you're fast enough when you wake up early, you will get a couple of replies at the end of their shift as you start your day. But like most people, I'm getting the kids ready and going to work at that time. So initial communication was at a rate of about one to three emails a day. But I sent them all the packaging and damage photos in a Google Drive link for an album and I sent that in the first email which explained all the issues. They asked me to unscrew the base but I'd already tried that and had explained in my original mail to them that I couldn't because two of the screws were snapped behind the plate and they wouldn't loosen, they just spun in place. And I got so frustrated after a week of back and forth that I sent them a video showing how I could not remove those bolts and their recommendation, go and buy a saw. So at this point, realizing they had no intention of providing a realistic solution, I took matters into my own hands and just smashed the feet in the opposite direction with a hammer. Sorry, I don't have footage of this, it's due to my aforementioned frustrations. But I may as well talk about the printer some. Uh, the feet, they're adjustable. But in hitting these back in the right direction with a hammer, whatever part of the casing was touching the motherboard or pinching a cable and whatever prevented power to the unit was untouched or unpinched and then we had power, yay! With zero thanks to Apex Maker. So the chassis, that's all metal and I mean all metal. The front, the back, the base, the sides, the back, the inside at the back, even the lid, everything is metal. And this lid is huge, but thankfully it's a lift up lid held up by two strong gas struts, which are similar in style to what you get in the boot of your car. 
um, that's trunk of your car for the American audience. Stick with me, my US watchers, you'll learn a lot more from these videos. And the rest of the build quality is right up there too. Look, the printer itself is incredible, but stick with me because we aren't done. Now it's hard to show on camera because it's all behind that internal metal backplate, but the dual linear rails run behind the internal backing plate and I can just about make out that it's got a ball screw that drives the Z movement of the huge build plate. Nice. But on the weaker side of things, and I hope they fix this in the final production model, that build plate isn't laser etched or anything special. In my case, it looked little more than just freshly cut from a larger block of metal. But I'm going to talk more about adherence issues later because reasons. Loading this plate onto the Z arm can be a tad finicky because the bolts are a bit too close to the frame, which prevents a full grip and turn of the knobs. And there's no clear leveling mechanism to worry about because the plate is leveled at the factory. You can adjust it if you absolutely need to, but you shouldn't need to. And there is a Z offset function you can use in case you're getting any elephant's footing issues, which I'll also come back to. Trust me, it'll be worth the wait. The vat is awesome. It's huge. It's metal. It's deep. You can get what seems like three or four liters of resin in it. It might just be two, but I got two bottles in there and it still had plenty of space to go. But its best feature is that it's got an integrated heater, not in the chamber, not below the screen, but inside the vat. And this can heat resin up to 60 degrees Celsius. And for some reason, the default was set to 55 degrees. And if you don't know, resin heaters are a godsend on any resin printer because resin print quality is heavily affected by temperature. So with this feature alone, the printer goes into the top picks category. And when it comes to resin heating, this is the best way to implement it too. Resin cures better when it's warm, but cured resin can also soften when it's warm. Chamber heaters are inefficient because, yeah, they heat up the chamber, but also the cured model before the resin in the vat absorbs the heat. What this means is the cured model can stretch or pull away from the supports a bit easier if it's too warm. But by heating the vat itself, the resin can be heated before the chamber is. And this keeps the cured model and its supports a little cooler throughout the whole print. This is the best way to implement resin heating, and this was the first printer I've ever seen to do it this way. And one thing to mention is it does come pre-installed with ACF release film, which I've said many times I don't like, but honestly, when printing large things on this printer, do you really care that much about micron level surface detail? Regardless though, I also got a spare ACF and two PFA sheets in the box, and two of three of these sheets are used, again though, in a, in a moment. And there's more features too. There's a carbon filter, and I like the way they've done this. All the mechanics are inside the printer's body, and the filter itself is just a little replaceable carbon block with a cardboard frame. So I hope this means replacements are pretty cheap. And there is also a built-in webcam. Now, I've had these in printers before, and they're useless because there's no light in the chamber. So unless you put one in yourself, you won't be able to see anything this can see unless you leave a very bright light on in the room the printer's in. But even then, you'll see a silhouette because the light's behind the model, not facing it from the camera. As for how this camera works, though, I've no idea. It says on the printer to use the app, but there is no Apex Maker app. And when I asked Apex Maker how I can test this, I got an instruction booklet sent my way in a language I can't read. On further chasing of how this works, I had no reply. There is a button on the UI that looks like a torch. I'd infer this is for a light, but they confirmed that this is not added yet. They may add this as an option for an upgrade feature. Fair enough, I guess. I mean, this is still a prototype at the end of the day. At least they are considering giving us the option. Where and how this would plug in though, I've no idea. On the ports though, this printer has two USB ports along the right side of the printer. It's got an ethernet port though, again, I've no idea what network functions this will provide because I had no instruction manual with this printer and could not get this working. One feature this should have is obviously accessing the camera, but can I send prints to it over the network? No idea, probably, but just not yet it seems. And the UI also tells me about a Wi-Fi function, but clicking this tells me there's no dongle found. I didn't get a dongle with this printer and they confirmed this will be an extra. Again, fair enough. Give me the option if I want it, but don't charge people for it who may not need it. That's pretty cool. So yeah, as I've said, this is a prototype unit. And as such, this video is a preview more than a review because Apex have told me they're still working on it and some changes will be made. 
I got some decent accessories with it. And with any decent printer, you get a metal scraper, some Allen keys, gloves, paper funnels. And in this case, I actually got a SanDisk USB drive. Doesn't mean that you will. This is a prototype after all. That may be the first place they try to cut costs in mass production. Though, in all honesty, I probably wouldn't care considering you can more than likely send prints to it over the network. What I did find neat though is you even get a metal tray with it, which is great for cleaning prints. It's actually a really great thing to use to just catch drips as you transport the bed from wherever the printer is to whatever prep surface you use for cleanup. Nobody else I've reviewed has ever provided me with one of these, and it's really good, but it would make more sense if it were at least the size of the build plate. But now they've shown me this idea, I can just grab a large oven tray for about a quid. Uh, that means a British pound, my dears. And you also get some spare bolts and extra nozzles for both ends of the resin feed. Yeah, that's right, it has an automatic resin feed. And I'm glad I got those extra nozzles because I needed to fix this too because the little plastic valve had snapped on the back during transit. Believe me, this wasn't the worst damage, you've already seen what happened. And once again, this print has changed my opinion on something like it did with ACF. I usually don't like resin feeders because it's much faster to just pour the resin in and out of a vat. But with vats this size, pumping resin out is a massive step towards getting it empty. I don't want to try pouring several litres of resin from it back into different bottles whilst balancing it all. And this system works really easily with the resin they provided. You get a spare cap with pipes in, and with this you just connect up the valve to the back of the printer, but this whole pump mechanism is made to work directly with their resin bottles. And you get a cap that can just easily connect up the valve to the back of the printer, but it doesn't fit on all types of resin bottles. There's nothing stopping you using the extra hose you get with this printer and just feeding that into any open bottle though. Or you can just use one of their empty bottles when you've used it up and pour your favourite resin into that. You're just a lot safer by keeping the cap on the bottle in case of any mid-print knockage and subsequent spillage. And there's also the UI. The interface on this machine is larger than the print area on some of my best printers. And it's full HD with a capacitive touchscreen. And the interface and translation is great. There's some minor work to do, but the layout's solid. Some of the icons, like the ones on the left side, quick access, aren't the most intuitive, but once you learn what option is in which submenu, you're fine. But the translation, yeah, that needs a wee bit of work. There were only a few things that I didn't quite understand, but I do think it's hilarious that the confirm or OK button text is sure. I genuinely love it when the printer gives you warnings like, you need this much resin in the vat to print this file. And then when you click sure, I actually like it. It's like really casually telling the printer, yeah, whatever, mate, you do you, sure, go ahead. Yeah, whatever, enough resin, you've warned me, cheers, get on with it. Love it. But yeah, it's a quirk. I kind of hope they keep that. But trust me, I've seen printers released to the general public in far worse states than this one. Okay, printing. So everything went fine at first. Apex Maker sent me four bottles of their fast resin, which I used up in no time. I pumped one into the vat and realized it wouldn't start printing until the resin reached the height of the view window for the sensor at the back of the printer vat. So I just poured in another bottle to save time. The USB drive came with four files on it and one was Chitty Box. The others were printer profiles and the final one was a fast mode test print. Now, I honestly suspect that this Thanos Sculpt won't ship with the final production model, assuming, of course, if Aper take two minutes to look up international copyright law. But nevertheless, this whole model printed in less than seven hours, and it's almost the full height of the build plate. That's 400 millimeters. Considering his fingers were still submerged in the resin, I'm guessing it couldn't really add much more to this print. And what's really good is that throughout the print, the resin pump kept the vat steadily topped up to the window line, which is essentially your max line. Though you could put much more resin in the vat still, the gradual feed is much better at keeping the temperature optimal throughout the print. Like no joke, they've added a load of features, but they've done everything right on this printer. But whilst Thanos printed, unfortunately the tips of his fingers failed. Regardless though, this is where I realised my first big problem, and it's not an Apex Maker problem, it's a me problem. I don't have a wash station big enough to clean this in. Now in retrospect, I actually had the Anycubic Wash & Cure Max in a separate box and hadn't yet opened it, so watch out for that review coming soon. 
Now, thankfully, this model wasn't so wide that I could actually get it in my cleaner in two passes, one each way round. But then I had another problem. I don't have a cure station big enough to cure this in. Okay, that's a problem for Ron. Later, Ron. I'm a dad, accept the dad jokes. But anyway, now I know the printer works, what should I print? I mean, I always print miniatures or the same Wolverine bust. So let's do that using the provided fast resin profile for this resin. And let's make it big. Now, unfortunately, when I came back to it the next day, it had failed. And this isn't the printer's fault, it's mine. I'm not practiced with supporting models at this scale. It needed far more on the base and I needed bigger holes in the bottom of the print because the lower body section became one big suction cup. So, oops, my bad. But hey -o, I still got enough to show the most important parts here in detail, like the face. And I would have tried to reprint this using the four bottles of resin I was given. I only had about a bottle and a half left, and I wanted to save that for more testing, along with what was still in the vat. And this is when I tried my hand at the miniatures I showed earlier. And I printed out 48 of Mezgike's dredge marines on one build plate. I know how to support miniatures, and I did these myself, all 48 printed with great success. And it's also worth noting that yes, they still use their fast resin, but in normal speed mode, not fast mode. But I did enable anti-aliasing and image blur to smooth out the voxel and layer lines you would definitely have from 46 micron pixels. Now, they aren't the best quality miniatures I've ever had, but you know what? They'll do, and they don't look bad at all, far from it. This is with fast resin, as I said, which isn't great for rendering details, but I'll come back to that. I wanted to use this printer to print something epic, just to show it off, and I figured I'd do a gigantic version of the Four Glory Sculpt by CA Sculpt. This time, I didn't support it myself. I just scaled up the whole pre-supported version to 275%, which, yeah, it made some very chunky supports, but it worked, initially and I'd run out of their speed resin that I had in the vat about halfway through this. So I just topped it up with any cubic fast resin, hoping that it'd work, and it did. It was fine, bar a slight color change. Unfortunately though, on the final stage, the body failed when I tried to print that. So I needed a full reprint of it. And whilst this one printed much better, it had a hole in the top. And that hole was the first sign of what has now all but killed this printer dead which I'll come back to in a moment. I promise this time it's the, it's the last segue. So in the meantime, I'd found a solution to my curing problem, and that was to just leave all the parts out in the sun. It was summertime after all. Unfortunately, this is still British summertime, so yeah, it's still raining. Don't, don't turn your nose up. This is shorts and t-shirt weather to us. Oh, and by the way, you might be impressed to know that all of these prints so far took just over a day. Yeah, wow. So anyway, that hole. So this hole wasn't a supports issue. It happened because somewhere in printing these parts, I'd pierced a hole in the ACF and the resin leaked onto the screen. But praise be because this printer has a pre-installed screen protector. Phew, thanks Apex Maker. Unfortunately though, I can't get a replacement for this because Apex Maker don't make one yet and I can't find a 16 inch one online. You can easily find numerous 7 to 12 inches online, but 16 inches seems very rare. That kind of surprises me on the internet. So anyway, I got to work replacing the ACF film, which usually takes ages because of all the bolts and then the frame bolts too. But this printer doesn't have a two-sided frame to remove because of the built-in heater. So that saved a ton of time. And I was desperate to get this on because I only had one more set of tests to do and that's by using a third party resin, my own resin. I like to see what it can do when printers use resin from different suppliers. I've shown you size and speed, now I wanna see the detail. So after my small feat of release film maintenance, I used my own Wargamer resin and started doing some exposure tests. And for some reason, everything I now printed either wouldn't stick to the plate or it had this weird large film around the edge. And yes, I also tried removing the PFA sheet I used as a makeshift screen protector to see if that was causing it. It wasn't. So once again, I tried informing Apex Maker that I punctured the ACF and removed the screen protector. I sent more photos via a Google Drive link and asked them about this weird layer film phenomenon. And their response, which was really helpful, yeah, you can try replacing your punctured ACF with a spare one. Yes, I know, 
I did that, and I already told you I did that. And look, I'm sorry, I know I'm sounding rude, but I'm not the only one out there dealing with these companies. You tell them what you did, and they recommend to you to do what you already did and told them you did. It comes across as ignorance, but again, it's likely just lost in translation. Nevertheless, it's incredibly frustrating. So instead, I reached out to the most useful 3D printer technical support resource I know, Dennis Wang. He suggested that this could be elephant's footing, suggesting that the zero position is too low, so it's squishing the layers. But nope. After several more tests at different zero heights, I even tried it without the build plate in, and still this weird film edge occurred on all of my prints. We tried a ton of tests, but just couldn't resolve it, and Apex were absolutely no help. I did learn at this time, three weeks into it, that they couldn't actually view any of the Google Photos folders links I'd previously sent them. That would have been great to know weeks ago when I was under the assumption that they'd seen my folder showing all of the printer damage. But anyway, this weird issue only affected the base layers, so I resolved to just print a load of models with whatever settings were acceptable and clean this crap off later. So I do have this stuff to show. And quality wise, it's okay. It's a little underexposed, but really it's the layer lines I wanted to see. A bit more image blur would help, maybe three or four times image blur, but this is passable quality at any regard. For a relative comparison, I'd say it's better than what I'd expect from a 6-inch 2K printer, almost on par with a 6-inch 4K printer, and considering that's what a ton of parts and mini printing companies out there are still using, that's more than good enough in my book for pretty much anything. So look, this printer's awesome. It's got really great build quality, and when you don't get one that's smashed, the print quality is good too. The main draw is very obviously its size, and you've really got to want a printer of this size to even consider it. But if you are printing big things rather than a lot of little things, you will need both a wash and a cure station that can cope. And you need to be aware that this drinks resin like a V8 drinks fuel. I'm eight bottles in without even realizing. And so far, I feel like I've only tested it. If you have problems though, I do worry for you. The unit's not light, nor easy to maneuver and perform maintenance on. When I finally stopped talking to the marketing team and spoke to some managers at Apex Maker, they were lovely, and they have at least verbally acknowledged that in these initial stages, their focus has been on the product and less so on the service. They say that this will be improved for general release. They've assured me packaging will change, which makes sense, and it's common. I've seen it with other brands. When I asked these senior staff about my issues so far, they did apologize for the saw suggestion and clarified that they meant I need to saw the screws off, not saw the printer open. Yes, obviously, but still, do you feel this is a good suggestion to offer to anyone? Imagine you're a paying customer and they asked you to do that. In the end, personally, I'd given up and just drilled them out so that I could access the internals. But even tightening the screws for the Z-axis didn't help, mainly because they were so secure already, I couldn't turn them any tighter. But at one point, they suggested the layer flappiness issue was due to my resin. To which I responded, okay, fair enough. It doesn't happen on any other printer, so please tell me, what does yours do differently to cause this phenomenon here? I asked what users should look out for, considering that statement suggests that the printer will only work with certain resins. Users would want to know what they should watch out for to know which resins won't work. But their response informed me that this was not true and it wasn't a resin issue because other users were able to get third-party resins to work. Now obviously I knew this and my previous comments were intended to make the point that this issue being caused by the resin is a bit silly. It still does it on their resin, just not as much. And so they asked if I would send it to another user based in Devon, but without a box or crate anymore, I just can't do this. I'd drive it if it weren't five hours away. But also, it was this suggestion that did upset me. I can repair it myself, no issue at all. Just tell me what they think the issue could be. Say something, anything. And I did end up speaking to that other user, and that at least was a breath of fresh air, because he suggested I try everything I've already tried, but it made me know that I was on the right track. But at this point, it just made me feel like the only reason Apex Maker wanted me to get someone else to look at it is because they didn't trust what I was showing and telling them. And 
I really wanted to say the most arrogant thing I've ever said. Do you know who I am? Look, I don't mean that my YouTube accolades make me any better than anyone in this world, but isn't it at least obvious through what I've done already that I know what I'm doing? I've told them every test that I've already done before they even suggested I do it. And I'd be happy to admit that I'm at fault somehow, but it's just not the case of me not answering them, it's them not answering me. So come on Apex Maker, just tell me what you think could be causing this issue and what I could do to resolve it. But they haven't done that, and I've had to come up with my own hypothesis, which again, they've ignored. So my view at this point is, at some point during the damage, the chassis or Z-rail is twisted slightly out of shape. So even at the lowest zero position, the build plate is too far away from the screen. I'm now having to overcompensate with excessive base exposure times just so things will stick to the plate. This, along with the potential void created by the now missing screen protector and the ACF sheet, is causing light to refract outwards excessively, causing this thin skin on the early layers. And yes, my ACF is the right way up. And it's going to take me a lot more testing and a proper new screen protector to get this back to how it was when it did work. And the truth is, after spending nearly six weeks testing this, I just don't have the time right now to devote to fixing it. I have so many other printers to review, printers that work. So look, let's be real. Apex haven't done anything intentionally bad to me here. I've accepted that communication issues are to some degree part and parcel when dealing with these companies from overseas. And from some of the experiences I've seen in many a 3D printer forum, none of the brands are any better and many are far worse. All of them would do anything to avoid you shipping a printer back to them, even when it doesn't weigh about the same as a baby car. Some brands are just better at masking it with us YouTubers. And I do worry because I honestly have no idea how they plan to offer service to their printers when they actually get released. They certainly won't pay to have it shipped back to them, but I recommend you keep the box in case you have to ship it somewhere else in your country. Apex are new and small, and this isn't an established company. That's kind of the point of a Kickstarter. We are paying for them to bring this company to the market. And you know what? The printer, when it works, is absolutely insane. In a good way, I mean, right? And I know, I'm ranting like an overprivileged child, and despite me getting a free one, I'm whining like I'm owed something. And yes, I have asked for a repair or a replacement so I could finish the review properly and even do follow-up videos when the new features come out. But whilst I'm not automatically entitled to a new replacement printer, I do think I at least deserve an answer to the question. I'd have accepted, we just don't have the stock to facilitate this right now. And despite all that, I can overcome my own self-importance and still say the product, however, is great. It's amazing. It's incredible. One of the best 3D printers ever made. I'm fully aware that I'm just being an entitled bitch who wants his awesome free printer to work. So considering this is technically a bad review, I'm sure you'll agree it's not so bad that what's probably Apex Maker's worst review is still saying this is an incredible printer. Assuming, of course, you want a big printer with a relatively low resolution, but still creates passable prints. It's very well built, and not only does it pretty much have every feature I'd want on a modern 3D printer, the whole user experience around it's smart too. So please, don't let my bad time put you off the brand. It hasn't put me off them. Yes, they need to mature and deserve the opportunity to do so just for creating this awesome unit. But just remember, if you do buy one, you might be asked to saw it open. Thanks for watching and thanks to our members who get early access, exclusive videos and help us keep making content like this. I've taken up more than enough of your time, so I'll finish with, it was beauty that killed the beast. That's not relevant to this review, I always just finish with a movie quote. Bohammer out.